Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. So, we've upgraded the audio a little bit, I've now got a fancy new mic, so hopefully we won't have any of the audio problems we had in some previous videos, and you'll be able to hear me in all my dulcet tones nice and clearly. There's been a murder, curly whirly, purple burglar alarm. That will only make sense to people in the UK of a certain age. So, I wanted to answer a couple of the questions I consistently get in this video, which is what do you feed your fish and how are the discus doing? So, we'll finish up with the discus update because uh, I've moved them into the display tank now and we'll take you through all the tanks and we'll talk about what I feed, how often I feed and the varieties of stuff that I feed. We'll kick off in this office. Tank number one, this is the Celestial Pearl Danios or Galaxy Rasboras. In here as well there's some cherry shrimp and there's also one killifish um, who lives in here. We've got the three babies and the four adult CPDs. Actually, this tank as well, this is the white cloud mountain minnows. Some goldens in there as well. These get the same food. So when I talk about what I feed this tank, it applies to both of these tanks. So generally I have a flake food. So this is a, a flake food that I buy in bulk and then separate it into, into little tubs. This is a heavy krill um, based flake. So it's based on krill, it's got a heavy krill content this flake. It's, uh, I've yet to find a fish that doesn't like it. So if any, if any fish will eat flake, it will eat this one. Um, I find it really good, I can buy it in bulk and then I just distribute it into these little tubs. Um, but we feed this stuff. What I like to do is just to put it in the flow of the filter and then that kind of spreads it through the tank like so. And the fish really go to town on it. Um, that's the staple for this tank, but I will also feed a, um, a variety of frozen foods as well. So. So I'll feed things like frozen brine shrimp, um, daphnia, if I have any, some micro worms and things like that. I don't often feed blood worms or anything like that, but I don't see why that would be an issue. And that seems to keep these guys, I mean look at the colours on these guys, and I think that's the heavy krill content in that flake that's doing that. And they're fat little puppies as well, so I think they're doing well. Same for the white clouds. Uh, I've just got a little hole in the lid here. They love this flake as well. Again, I'll feed them a variety of frozen foods every now and again as a treat, but the, the krill flake is really the staple for these guys. They love it, and as you can see, there's quite a few fatties in there. There's a couple of really skinny ones. Um, that one there in particular, that has been really skinny, but it's starting to come back now. But the rest of them are doing pretty well. There's a couple of bristlenose plecos in here as well. I feed them a variety of algae wafers. Again, I just buy them in bulk. Uh, and all the bristlenoses I feed a variety of algae wafers, unless they're in the bristlenose breeding tank, and then they get a bit more of a, a varied diet. Let's move on to Humphrey's tank. So this is Humphrey, he's my two-tone camphor flower horn with his big cock. The cock is the thing on top of his head, I'm not being rude. Um, I think he's quite magnificent. He's got a little bit of a gill issue there. Um, a little bit of a gill curl starting to develop. But he's fantastic. So what he gets is up here. So he gets a combination of this Hikari Cichlid Gold, Fluval Bug Bites, and this Tropical Flower Horn Young mixture. Um, what I've also got this here, this is hilarious. So on a recommendation from some other flower horn keepers, get some spirulina pellets, they said. So I ordered a big massive bag of spirulina pellets. Look at the size of them. So, made a bit of a cock up. I mean, he does eat them, but I was looking for a bit of a bigger pellet. So, again, I feed these to the smaller fish as well, because they, they really benefit from that too. I should have mentioned that before. But back to this. So, I will generally feed... Um, these pellets are all of a similar size. These are the biggest pellets. Slightly smaller and smaller still. 
Uh, if I go for the Hakari Gold pellets, I'll generally feed that many. Well, maybe a bit less than that. Go for four, five, six, something like that. And he really is an aggressive feeder, so he will go for all of them. As you can see, just takes them straight out of the, straight off the surface. No waiting for any of them to sink for this guy. And I feed him twice a day. Um, I like to have a day off as well, so when I do the water change in this tank, I don't feed him. But on all the other days, he gets two feedings a day. And I'll generally feed him, like I say, five or six of these pellets, or a mix of these pellets. So maybe on feed one, I'm going to give him a few of these pellets and maybe one or two of the bug bites, and then on feed two, you'll get a handful of them. As you can see, I was trying out some plants, and as predicted, he just destroyed them all. So they'll be coming out shortly. I mean, the, the tank is looking quite good planted already. I've got this hanging light that I've managed to string the pothos around, which looks quite good. But there's Humphrey, and we'll go downstairs into the fish room now. So when I'm feeding the fish room, the first thing I'll do is get into the freezer. I have, I'm allowed an entire drawer for fish food. So in here we've got, this is my special mix of homemade food. And then I have a number of blister packs of various things. Um, I'll show you this in fact. So this is one of my favourite frozen foods. It's a big slab of brine shrimp, so it comes like this. A lot of the times when you buy blister packs of things, the majority of the stuff in there is water, so if you get, unless you can get a really good quality version, you can spend a load of money, or wasting a load of money on water, whereas this is jam-packed, and it's actually really good value. So some of the brands that I do like are these Gamma blister packs and BC UK Aquatics, I've used them quite a few. If I can find them, I'll put links down in the description to where I get these sort of things. But as you can see, I've just got tons and tons of this stuff. And then in this box, that is just some of these um, frozen brain chips all smashed up into little chunks, as well as some of my homemade beef heart. Well, this is actually fish heart, but same sort of idea. So I take out a few of the things that I want to use in the fish room. You don't need to defrost them all the time because they really will defrost quite quickly in the tank. But I like to let them soften up at least. So I'll put them into little tubs in the fish room ready to be fed in a few minutes. So we'll do that now. So I've put a little tub like this um, in the fish room with some brine shrimp and some blood worms, which I'm going to feed now. At the same time, I've also got a little one with some of the beef heart and the frozen brine shrimp, which I can then take upstairs to feed the big tank when we get to that. So I'll leave that in the side for now. By the way, what do you think of the shirt? I had a few comments from subscribers recently saying I need to smarten up. While I'm on the subject of subscribers, just a bit of admin, I noticed in my subscribers that only 30% of the people that watch my videos actually click the subscribe button. If you could do that for me, that would really help me out, that'd be great. Anyway, let's get back in here. Now, I have just switched the lights on in here for the video, so the fish might just be waking up, so to speak, and they might not feed as readily as they would normally, but we'll have a go anyway. So down here, we've got Penelope. This is the rescue goldfish that my daughter brought home one day. I like to feed most of my fish a really varied diet. And today, it's her turn to get a few of these. So again, these are the Hikari Vibrabites. These are the little tiny things that resemble bloodworms. She gets a few of them. Uh, and she really quite likes them. While well, I'm at it, on this level we've got betta fish, snails, betta fish, some baby bristlenose plecos and some more snails. So the two betta fish tanks, they get a couple of these Viber bites as well. Again, on occasion, they will get frozen food and various other things in here. There's not, well, I'll talk about the ones that I only feed specific things. Most of the fish, most of the fish in here get a variety of things. And then we come to the tanks up here. So at the moment, we've got snails, shrimp, 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 um, 
just cherry shrimp at the moment so I'm remodeling this at the minute so I've cleared them all out they've, at the moment they've just got cherry shrimp in and I'm planning to get some try and do some not necessarily line breeding but specific breed breeding of different types of guppies so we'll get there because guppies and cherry shrimp go really well together I've found but while it's just cherry shrimp either algae wafers or a tropical flake so slightly different to the krill based flake because it's a bunch of flakes that have different contents so I want to get some veggie matter in for them as well again just a little sprinkling in each one cherry shrimp really don't need much food that's also what I found and then I give a little bit to the snails as well and that's them happy and then we have this bank of tanks so this bank goes rams pea puffers and uh, bristlenose plecos so we'll start with the rams the rams will generally get a mix like everything else I will keep saying this um, but if I give them the flakes they really like the krill flakes um, I will also give them the, the tropical flakes so they get a mix of everything they like the spirulina powder pellets as well they do quite well on them but I'll also give them frozen food quite heavily so I'm trying to build them up so we'll give them some of the brain shrimp I've just got a little bit that I've broken off and then just drop it in basically I can get out of that reflection and now just because I'm filming him he's going to ignore it oh there we go so brain shrimp I think is a fantastic food most of the fish in here go absolutely crazy for it they love it everything in the fish room tends to get fed once a day and that's it and then in the tank next door we have the pea puffers so the peas are one of the fish that don't get the same as everyone else they have their own special varied diet and that is snails so I usually drop in a bunch of snails for them they will eat the ram's horn snails or the Malaysian trumpet snails because they don't really go for the shells, they just suck the snails out. And as well as snails, I like to give them some bloodworm. Such great personalities. And then we have this tank which is kind of semi-scaped in that it's got wood and rocks and various hides and things like that in there and also some cherry shrimp managed to make it in there so now I've got a colony of cherry shrimp in there that I just can't get them all out but there's a lot more than I thought there was so cherry shrimp available on the website now I need to start thinning this out a little bit but in here we've got super red bristle noses, albino bristle noses, lemon bristle noses, normal bristle noses and these danios as well so this tank it's pretty much the same as this tank for inhabitants and as you can see what I do here is I will every now and again just get a courgette or zucchini for my American friends stick a knife in it, a fork in it, a spoon in it in this case uh, and let it sink in there and then they usually make short work of that within a day at most uh, and that is great for the bristle noses they really go to town on that other than that it's algae wafers and these are the algae, this, well, these are the tropical flakes and these are the algae wafers so as you can see there's a few different ones, there's some spirulina ones, there's some um, plain algae ones, there's yeah, quite the mix in there again I'll put some links in there I do have quite a lot of bristle nose plecos so I'll normally get a fair old mixture like that and then that goes in there for these guys I will every now and again throw in some um, frozen brine shrimp and things like that as well because they seem to quite enjoy that too the shrimp also like those wafers so they go for that as well and then these guys mop up the scraps and then last one down here is the big tanks down here with the angel fish in it so it's, this is angels and bristle nose plecos again as you can see hiding out so plenty of wood for the bristle noses that's very important for them uh, all the tanks for the bristle nose have some wood in it but the angels, which are all hiding, you might not be able to see them, but they're down there. Again, because I've just turned the lights on, they might be a little bit shy. They will get a mix of the krill flakes, 
some frozen foods and the Hikari Vibra Bites. I really quite like them. There's one come out to say hello. So we'll put in a little pinch of the Vibra Bites, like so. And then I just pour in a little bit of the, the brine shrimp, like so. And then maybe if I take a step back, we'll come out and have a go at it. It doesn't take them long, usually. I know these guys were sold to me as Ultimate Angels, but even though they're just normal angels, I still think they're quite stunning. I don't know if it's coming across, but they, sometimes they have this tinge of colour. And they're a bit dull now because the lights have just come on, but when they do get coloured up, they get really dark stripes, and then there's a bit of red, there's a bit of green. These are really good eaters as well. They're always quite aggressive and up for it. I mean, I'm pushing them a little bit by turning the lights off and giving them some stuff, but as you can see, they've woken up quickly enough. And then we have my faithful hound as well. This is Mia, who likes to come and watch me to see if I forget to leave the lids on or if I drop anything. And then she helps me hoover it up. Don't you, Mia? So we're up in the living room. This is my big display tank. The system, I think, is about 700 litres worth. Um, mainly discus in there, but we've also got... In fact, let's turn the lights on. Alexa, turn on the display light. Um, we also have cardinal tetras. We've got some bristlenose plecos, we've got a couple of rainbow fish, we've got some of the silver flying foxes, all kinds of things. Now again, I've just turned the lights on, so the fish might not be all that awake yet. But as you can see, or maybe not, because they're still a bit sleepy, all the new discus are in here. Um, actually, if I show you the top, I've actually switched off one of the lights and half covered the other one, because I'm trying to reduce the lighting at the moment. Um, to fight the blackbeard algae that we talked about a couple of videos ago. I'll stick a card up there if you want to go and have a look. But you can see one of the silver, oh, it's just moved. One of the silver flying foxes down there having a go at some of the blackbeard algae. They have made quite the impact already. I mean, that rock there that we're looking at, we couldn't even see that before. So yeah, they've made quite a difference. And if you go and check this in comparison to the old video, that's a massive impact they've had. So still plenty there to keep them going. Um, but yeah, that's one of the new fish there. Looking fine. That's one of the other new fish over there. So as you can see, it's quite a busy tank, quite full tank. I've um, got all sorts of things in here, but what I like to do is feed this tank twice a day. So today I'm going to give them some of the beef heart we talked about earlier and some of the frozen brine shrimp. As you can see, it's quite melted. Normally don't melt it this much, but things get in the way. And they've just woken up, so they may not go for it straight away. But just basically tip it in like so. Makes quite the cloud, and as you can see, all the fish eat this. So I will feed this tank a couple of times a day. Um, once with this frozen mix, probably, and once with some dry foods. And this big blue boy, he's quite the quite the appetite he's got on him. But as you can see, all the fish. Even though they've just woken up, they're all out having a munch. They're looking a bit dark at the moment, but I think that is just because I've just turned the lights on. But they're all looking fantastic. There's the Heckle Turk cross. If anything, he's probably the shyest. I don't know if that's to do with his wild roots. Um, all looking great. 
So on this tank as well, what I have is one of these auto feeders here. So I have this on and that's set for either two or three times a day, but it doesn't let out much. So if I show you. And that's filled with the Hikari Vibra Bites. So it just puts in a little bit like that. Then I have this tub here. And this is full of the Vitalis discus pellets, the soft ones. You can see that. Another staple food for these fish. So we'll get that a couple of times a day. A pinch of that once a day, usually a frozen meal once a day. Um, every now and again I'll mix it up and I'll throw in some black worms or some other frozen foods, whether they be mice or shrimp or something like that. I don't really like feeding these guys blood worms. I mean, there's probably nothing wrong with doing that these days, but it was one of the things that was drummed into me when I first started keeping discus is you don't feed them blood worms because there's not really any nutritional value in it for them. Um, but yeah, I think variety is the spice of life. As you can see, they're looking pretty good. Nice big plump bellies, fat heads and active fish. That's what you want to see. So I think the main takeaway from this is you want to give your fish the best quality food that you can really. Um, some fish will have specific dietary requirements, whereas you can give more general food to most things. Um, something I like to do is make sure that I mix it up, give them a good variety of foods. Um, there are camps of people, certainly with discus for instance, that will say that the food that's in a beef heart mix for instance, that gives you that full nutritional balance that they need. Um, that doesn't mean you can't throw in the odd frozen treat and things like that. So I like to mix it up. I like to feed as many foods as possible because um, I think that balance and that mix gives your fish the best chance to grow and it seems to work for me as well. My fish do pretty well with that mix of foods. Um, frozen foods are great for things like um, conditioning fish for breeding, um, whereas your dry food is a good staple. I mean, uh, most of my tanks have these um, auto feeders that I've shown you and they feed a tiny amount every day just in case I'm, I don't get back from work in time or I'm away doing not so much these days, but um, I like the auto feeders to feed the dry food so there's always a little bit going in and only tiny amounts. I think overfeeding is one of the most dangerous things you can do with your fish. Uh, and then I like to feed the frozen or the other types of food myself. So if you haven't already, click subscribe because we'll do a video in future about making your own fish food. I have made a couple in the past, but I'll do another one and talk about the, the benefits of that, not only in cost, but in nutritional value. But I hope you found something useful there. And like I say, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.